Good morning and welcome to Morocco. My name is Caroline and I'm traveling around this gorgeous country for a couple of weeks with not only my other half Andy, but also a newly found group of friends because I'm on an intrepid tour. This morning we've got just an hour or so to kill here in Fez before we hop on a bus that takes us to Chef Chauen. So this morning we're going to just pop into the market that's opposite our hotel because I've got a feeling that it's a real local market and I'd just like to see what sorts of things that they've got for sale. I think we've hit the fish section again. Only this one had a lot more flies. <laughs> um. This market seems to have specialised in plants and flowers, selling pets also a fish market. What I loved is the fact that a lot of the pet shops sell the pet food in these really big open bags so people can just scoop out the amount that they want to purchase. And a few of the stray cats have been cheeky and bold enough to go up to those open bags and when the owners haven't been looking just to start munching on some of the food at the top. A minibus has come to collect us and just take us along to the public bus station. My understanding is we're going to be taking a bus line called CTM along to Chef Chauen. Oh yeah, don't forget anything. Like your dates. <laughs> The bus station looks really small and what I'm thinking is that it's probably uh, just a bus station for CTM buses. We've also been given these that we've been told have to go on to our luggage. They do have stands where you can go and buy tickets but from my understanding buses sell out really far in advance. I've known other travellers to come here and they've been here for an extra day or two just because the next availability to buy a bus ticket is in a few days time so I'd recommend that if you are coming here on your own maybe as soon as you arrive in fares pop along if you want to go up to Chef Chauen afterwards. <laughs> two hours into the four hour journey and we stopped up at the service station. It's got all of the things that you would normally expect. So there are toilets and there's a nice combination of both the sport toilets that you would kind of expect here and also western style toilets. The main difference is, is that there's usually just a loo roll on the very end as you go on in so you take off the toilet paper that you need rather than finding it inside of the actual cubicles. And there's usually like a tap with a little bucket where you can run water if you need it. There's some slight differences between the UK and here here, but they're always pretty clean. And there's a few fast food type places where you can get fries and paninis, but we've all decided to go with the slightly more enthusiastic way of eating. Believe it or not, at this service station there is a butcher's where our guide has really helpfully picked out a whole load of different meats. I've been told that there's liver and there's heart. And we've also got some things like mince meat and some cutlets. And there's also a barbecue station where they are flame grilling some food for us. <laughs> One of the things that Hamid has just picked up is a heart. He's not 100% certain whether it's going to be either a lamb or a goat's heart, but he was saying it wouldn't be anything big like a cow's. So I'm always up for trying something a little bit new. Yeah, that sums it up pretty much perfectly. The heart, whether it's goats or lambs, is absolutely delicious. It's, it's so much more tender than like your standard meat and it's full of flavor. And as these guys have quite rightly pointed out, you know that this is gonna be really, really good quality meat because it won't be pumped full of hormones the way in which it is back at home. Oh, this is good, huh? 
The next thing that's just landed on the table, and my goodness, this is hot, it must have just come off the barbecue, is liver. And again, I'm really not too sure what animal the liver is from. And I think way back when I was in primary school, I might have had some liver and really didn't like it, but I always say that if you ever try anything for the first time on a primary school lunch and you haven't liked it, you need to try it again as an adult where it's been better prepared than in a school canteen. Whilst it doesn't offend me, I don't think it's quite as nice as the heart. Weirdly, it's a little bit softer. I guess a little bit chalky would be the best way to describe liver. I'm happy to finish eating this, but I probably won't go for a second one. I think there's tastier things on this table. I think our guide Hamid had managed to convince people or I don't know maybe like pay extra for a VIP service to allow us to get our bags on first which meant that ours were right packed down in the middle of the bus at the bottom so it just meant that they were the last to come off so by the time we'd gotten off the bus we were there ready to collect our bags. I think everyone who's now getting on this bus to maybe go back to fares has all kind of descended around the bus because they're desperate to get their bags on board and yeah it's just a little bit on the hectic side of things but I'm really pleased that we've had Hamid with us to guide us through the whole process and also just get those bags in a safe way. That's all you guys have? Yeah. Yeah. Have a lot. You're in the wrong car. Once again, I can only guess that the bus station is nowhere near our accommodation as Hamid has negotiated a whole load of Le Petit Taxis for us. And I'm guessing that it's exactly the same ruling as Fez because only three of us have been able to ride in each one. Wait, it's the blue one right there, up there? Shukran. 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 Sahayo are welcome. Oh, shukran. <laughs> We're again not staying inside of the Medina, but we've been told that this is supposed to be the most beautiful of all of the accommodations. And if the entryway is anything to go by, I think our guide might be right. Moroccan tea yeah. is whiskey Moroccan. Oh, <laughs> get drunk now. Oh wow, look at that ceiling. Oh 
One of the things to do on an evening is to go up to the Spanish mosque here in Chef Chauen for a sunset and I think time is quickly pressing on so we're heading out now to hopefully catch the sun before it goes down behind the mountains. I appreciate that if you're right down at the bottom of the Medina it might be a slightly different story and our hotel is quite high up on this hillside but the mosque is pretty much right in front of me now and I would describe this as being a bit more of a stroll rather than any kind of hike. The only difference is is because we've let it so late we've kind of bugged it up here but it's really well paved there's plenty of people out and about. There's actually quite a lot of people selling items and there's also a point where there's some benches although I do feel like the trees have grown quite a lot so the view from those benches aren't the best so we're going to keep on going and hopefully the mosque will be giving us that best viewpoint. We got up here ahead of the sun setting but it is super busy so what I would recommend is that if you're wanting a prime spot on the wall that overlooks the town you want to get here pretty early and unfortunately this time of the year that's right at the very end of October it looks like the sun is going to drop down behind the very peak of the mountain on the other side so I don't think we're going to get too much of a gorgeous orange glow as far as watching the sun go down goes but I think we might get a pretty gorgeous glow on the actual town of Chef Chouen. I have to confess the sunset wasn't quite as spectacular as maybe what I was hoping for but one thing that I very quickly picked up on is that the sunset is not due to set for about another hour or so and there are an awful lot of tourists who seem to be still heading up towards the mosque so because of the mountain it's definitely one of those where you want to come nice and early on but I think what's probably been the highlight for me is that as we've been walking back down we came across a group of what we assume to be some wild goats and I think maybe some sheep too and we just thought that they were very innocent munching away at some of the leaves of a fallen tree then a lady came running along shouting I'm not too sure what she was shouting and then starts throwing stones at these wild goats and we've realized that it was probably a fig tree and because the tree was right next door to a house we think that it's probably her fig tree and she doesn't want the goats eating them 